Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah. Inshallah, this season we'll be also be looking at different other maraja and their verdicts on these topics as well. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Salaamu Alaikum, Sheikhna. Salaamu Alaikum, Rahmatullah. How are you this evening? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Sheikhna, we've been discussing a lot over the last couple of uh, episodes on youth. Um, we're looking at you know, living here in the West and, and, and things that we do here in the West. For example, we looked at um, you know, going to school, having uh, uh, opposite gender friends. We looked at uh, wearing a tie uh, and, and shaking hands. Um, one thing that is very, very popular within living in the West is watching films. Um, and it's specifically horror movies. Now, me, I'm not a fan of horror films. I, I can't watch them. I can't sleep at night properly. But... Horror films are very, very popular amongst the youth and also, uh, you know, uh, olders as well. Is this Islamically allowed to actually watch these films? What if they have, uh, you know, a very, very detrimental effect on an individual's health, on an individual's psychology? Um, what is the Islamic verdict on, on this? Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Rabbil Alameen. وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. اللهم صل على محمد. Well, if they cause fear amongst the uh, the, uh, the audience or the viewers or whoever is watching, and that fear is extremely harmful. Uh, if there's an extreme harm, then it's not permissible. It's not allowed. So we have to look at the cases and scenarios. See. Let's say which film, which movie is harmful or which is not. Sometimes you might watch it and you enjoy it instead of feeling that uh, um, harm of, of, of watching these uh, movies. But in overall, it's better to avoid them psychologically, mentally. They will have uh, a very bad consequences at the end after, let's say, a couple of years, especially if they're, they are, let's say, under 18. So it's better to avoid watching these movies and films and watch something that is more useful. Let's say documentaries about the nature, the animal world, for example, instead of watching these films, which at the end of the day, you don't get anything out of it except fear. <laughs> um, I don't think there's much enjoyment in overall from watching these movies and films. So it's better to avoid it and watch something useful that gives you knowledge, gives you uh, the right entertainment or the useful entertainment instead of uh, uh, the harmful entertainment. I think we, I mean, you both agree that, you know, we encourage all our viewers to keep watching uh, Imam Hussein TV to get real benefit and real, you know, different shows and, and programs and inshallah help you in Akhira as well as in Dunya. Shaykh, my next question is in regards to drugs. Now, we did discuss before, you know, the youth have issues and drugs is one of these pressures and one of these issues that the youth deal with. Why in Islam are drugs prohibited? Let me read what the Sayyid Hafizullah mentions with this regard. He says, uh, the reason for the provision is the perversion of the mind, religion, and squandering of wealth. In other words, if you use drugs, you lose everything, your mm -hmm. mind, yourself, the sometimes religion. even your family. Mm -hmm. You have to, God forbid, na'udhu billah, to sell your family, family to get the means and the money for buying more drugs. So it will ruin your life, entire life, family life, everything. And of course, it will ruin and destroy your akhirah, fate as well, na'udhu billah, in hellfire. So you have to think very well before, you know, stepping into taking these lysis and then the smallest amount of drugs now and now the the world is crying out from uh, the pains and the consequences of of the drugs uh, and we just had recently 
six people died just from news I oh, heard wow. yesterday mm -hmm. in, in Essex, in East London. Okay. Six people passed away because of taking some uh, bits of drugs. Drug overdose. Exactly. So it's better to avoid it. Oh, the wow. aql, the rule of reason, rejects it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, clearly the Quran and the Hadith also reject all types of harmful substances or means in which destroys the insans and, and the human beings uh, uh, dunya and of course the akhirah as well it's, it's really crazy how uh, you know what these these are called like you know drugs for recreational use um, you know for pleasure um, and how addictive they've become uh, and people get addicted to them and then I've, I've, I've seen in, in my area I mean I don't come from a very nice area but we used to see them on, on the road and stuff and you can see their health deteriorating and these people um, they have no family people have just rejected them and abandoned them you know God forbid if that happens to anyone and not just drugs but I mean there's other bad habits as well which are bad for your health for example smoking is, is another one um, what does Ayatollah Sayyid Sistani have to say in regards to smoking um, and taking up this habit? Ayatollah Sistani mentions uh, that for the start, as initial take up of smoking, let's say for a youth who is 18, 19, and he wants to start smoking, he says to start up the smoking is haram, is forbidden if, he puts a condition, if there is a severe harm, um, either it's a, let's say long term or short term. At the end of the day, if, if this individual feels that if he takes up smoking now, he starts smoking, he may have uh, to face, let's say, different illnesses, heart, heart disease, other lung disease, and yes. so forth. In this case, if such a, a, a situation might happen to this newly smoker, then it's haram for him to start smoking. Otherwise, he says that if there's no harm, then labas, he can. Uh, or she can start smoking. But in overall, it is better to avoid it. It's, it's, it's harmful, especially for our youth who are thinking to start taking up smoking or even shisha, for example. It's better to avoid it. These are, at the end of the day, uh, Waste the time of the, of the youth, the time of the individual, the money, the wealth. And of course, it leaves bad smell, you know, the bad breath and, and so forth. So it's better to avoid it. However, uh, with Samah Sayyid Marja, he would mention um, that um, it is makruh. It is allowed, but with uh, karaha, so with, with undesirable act, with dislike. So it's better not to do uh, and not to take up smoking from the beginning to avoid this uh, hukum, which is makruh, which is a lower level of haram. So imagine uh, how the hukum is. So the recommendation is, uh, or the advice is that avoid smoking from the beginning. Uh, it will shorten your life at the end of the day. You want to live longer, but by smoking, you might have to live even shorter you know, two or three years shorter. So for your benefit, uh, for, to have longer uh, age, it's better to uh, avoid smoking from the beginning. And if you can, then quit. If you're a smoker, then quit. That's the best uh, advice that you would get. Sheikh, I want to ask you a personal question in regards to smoking. Um, we know that smoking was very common practice within you know, the Middle East uh, beforehand. Um, and we, we even have some, you know, Maraja who famously used to smoke as well. Now that we are more aware of the scientific research, we're more aware of how bad it is for your health, do you think in the future the Maraja will, will make it haram and say, no, do you know what? Smoking is totally forbidden. It's bad for your health. It's a bad habit. Do you think in the future this will happen? You see, the ulama and the Maraja, they would go back to the principles and the foundations and the qawaid of the, of the hukm al-shari, the Islamic ruling. So in there, what they find is that only the severe harm makes it haram. Okay. La dharar wa la dharar. So based on this qaida, they would issue the fatwa. So drugs, yes. 
there's an instant, there's a, mm -hmm. a quick and a swift uh, side effect to taking the drugs, it's haram. Mm -hmm. But with regard to smoking, they say if it reaches that level of harm, the severe harm, then it becomes haram. Otherwise, as I mentioned, uh, otherwise, if there is no harm, then there's no issue, but it's makro, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So in future, again, I, I don't think the fatwa would be changing Changed. that much. Mm -hmm. the, qaid, the, the, the base yeah. of the hukum of the fatwa, the shari fatwa, is that if there's a severe harm, it's not allowed. If there's no harm, then there's no issue but with karaha, makruh. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Sheikh, the youth go through so much uh, temptations as well in, in, in the West. And it's very, very difficult because we don't live like in an Islamic environment. We don't hear the adhan. We're not surrounded by Muslim people. We're always, uh, you know, on guard, you could say. And temptation comes. Now, what do you say to the youth who, you know, maybe astaghfirullah, but they, you know, they commit haram, then they repent, but then they commit haram again, then they repent, and then they, they, you know, they, 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 you know, they, they because they have, you know, weak desires or, or you know, their their um, willpower is is quite weak. Um, are these people making a mockery of the religion by committing haram and repenting, committing and repenting? Or has you know are they still in in uh, included in the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَى أَنْفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ One should not despair and be hopeless. From the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The doors of the tawbah and repentance are always open. Always try to go back and do istighfar whenever you commit a sin. Always try to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Always repent. That's why it is recommended that for the individual to do 100 times istighfar. Astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu in the morning. So let's say you finish the Fajr Salah, you did Ta'qibat, and then you say 100 times, Astaghfirullah, Rabbi wa Atubu And then in the evening, let's say after Salat al-Maghrib, an Isha, or let's say before you sleep, you do another 100 times, Astaghfirullah, Rabbi wa Atubu So between the dawn and uh, the, the dusk, you have made, you've cleared up, and uh, you, you wiped up, you're your, uh, your, uh, asking Allah SWT to Erase and wipe your sins by doing istighfar. So that is the best option. Is to always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do the istighfar and try to avoid going back. So when you do that, na'udhu billah haram, you try to uh, make the intention and the plan and encourage yourself that I'm not going to do this again. And if you do, God forbid, you do istighfar and tawbah. The door of Tawbah is open always for everyone. I sent Sheikh and I think it's really important that you know the viewers understand, um, not just the viewers, but everyone. I mean, that nobody's perfect, and you know, life is full of trials and tribulations, and we're not going to pass all of them. But uh, you know, the, the, the door of repentance, as you said, and the mercy of Allah is always infinite. Sheikh uh, I wanted to ask you in regards to. Friendships that we have and I asked you previously as well in regards to making jokes and, and this is very common amongst boys uh, We always you know joke with our friends and, and, and stuff like that Is it permissible to actually you know have banterous fun and make jokes with your friends? If these jokes tend to be annoying and harming the others the other mu'min then it's haram you can't You know I've seen this in some schools for example or colleges that they try to laugh to take somebody to mock someone, mm -hmm. who is it, let's say he's humble, he's weak, let's say he's one of those who is very quiet, isolated from the rest of the students, they try to mock him, laugh, joke, you know, that is haram, that is harming this individual, and he can't do anything, he's by himself, he's alone, he's got no friends, now you take this opportunity to mock him and make your friends laugh, that is haram and it has consequences in dunya and akhirah. So it's better to avoid it. 
Shaykhna, mashallah, your bed looks amazing today. Alhamdulillah, I've got one as well. Some of our Muslim brothers um, refrain from keeping the bed. Now, is the issue actually keeping growing a bed, keeping a bed, or is the issue shaving the bed? And if it is shaving the bed, is it permissible to shave the bed? Maybe it's for work purposes. Sometimes people work in the food industry, um, and you know they can't have hair falling into the food. Um, also in the military, um, you know they they want their soldiers to have clean shave. Is this permissible in Islam? Um, a group of Persians came from the uh, Persian Empire to meet the Prophet Sallallahu in, in Medina and they came with long moustaches and shaved beards so the Prophet Sallallahu told them that my Lord ordered me to keep the beard and to trim or shave uh, the moustache so in this case, it is not allowed for a Muslim, for a believer, to shave his beard. Even by using the uh, new technologies, I don't know, by using the trimming machines, for example, where uh, it's not going to be like shaving, you know, you're not going to use the, the sharp razors to, mm -hmm. blades to shave, but it's, it's just the machines. But if that machine shows nothing on the face, or very small, little, tiny hair, on the face, then um, in this case, it is also cons considered to be um, shaving. So you have to make sure that you don't shave your beard and stick with the ahkam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, today we see that it became like a fashion <laughs> that even some of the celebrities and sports players now, they, they grow up uh, beard. Yeah, at the it, moment, it, yeah, it became, it became fashion, like yeah. a fashion. Yeah. So uh, we stick with our ahkam and sharia and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his holy prophets had instructed us to do so. Okay, Sheikh, so we've established you're not allowed to shave your beard, okay? But how long are we allowed to grow it and how short are we allowed to take the beard? There must be some guidelines into how short you should have your beard uh, if you want to shorten it and the, you know, how long you should have your beard if you want to grow it longer. Well, it can be identified by the commonly accepted norms. So what is customary when both uh, meet each other, they can easily see. So you would say to him, oh, you have now long birds, for example, you have birds. So it is part of the normality that when you both meet, you see each other's faces. You can easily tell that this individual uh, has birds or not. So it depends. But it has to show in somehow uh, to the minimum requirement that you have grown birds. This is the minimum requirement. Sheikhna, what do you say to those people who say that Islam is old fashioned, uh, Islam needs updating, or you know, Islam isn't meant to be followed literally, or everyone follows Islam literally? Um, what do we say to people who have these you know, accusations towards Islam? Quran is clear about this and mentioned in a verse that in the Dina and Allah Islam, Allah considers Islam only as a true, guided, and rightly religion that He chose. It is the choice of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He chose uh, the final religion by the final prophets of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to be the final religion to be uh, taken by the humanity and uh, of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed his religion so the religion was completed especially by appointing Imam Ali alayhi salam on the day of Radir so Islam is a complete means and uh, of, of ahkam, a set of ahkam rules that takes care of everything from uh, the one's uh, body in terms of what should the one do, for example, uh, in terms of the social life, in terms of political life, uh, um, educational life, all aspects of life was mentioned in the Sharia. Ah. Now, some in detail, some just mentioned in overall, uh, that the one should basically 
ad adhere to these instructions because they are divine instructions. Today, alhamdulillah, we can see all the how the man-made laws are falling apart in the world. You know, the capitalism, mm -hmm. the Marxism, and um, communism, which fall apart just uh, a few years ago. Now the capitalism and the credit crunch in 2008. We can see that today's man-made laws are falling apart and they cannot actually solve uh, these issues. The solution is within Islam and the Hakam of Islam, which will give the freedom and which will give the, the harmony and the tranquility and the peace to all nations, not only the Muslim nation, to all nations. Uh, the freedom of human rights and all types of, hu of, of human aspects and rights are there in Islam, in complete version in which will fulfill the happiness and felicity of the humankind in this world and in the hereafter. Asan, thank you very much, Sheikh. Now, thank you to our viewers for joining us on Ahkam SOS. If you have a question that you'd like to send in to the Sheikh, you can uh, email us on SOS at imamhussein.tv. It should be right there at the bottom. And inshallah, we'll see you on the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.